clever people, and welcome to my review for Paddleton. So Paddleton stars Ray Romano and it follows the story of two aging friends and one of them is diagnosed with a very bad form of cancer. And it's basically where his odds of surviving are slim to none. And he decides that he is going to go on a program where over time he becomes less and less healthy until he dies but it's in a humane way through a pill. And it's about him and him dealing with that as well as his friend. So Paddleton is part of the Netflix original uh, reviews that I have been doing recently. I do have an update at the end about those reviews, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I will talk about Paddleton. This was not a movie I'd heard anything about until I suddenly see it pop up on Letterboxd, like popular, top 20 popular films of the week or something. And I thought, oh, I should check this out. I was ex I, When I saw the cast and when I saw how it looked, I thought that it all, it looked intriguing. So I was excited to watch it. And I was blown away by Paddleton. I think that this is in heavy contention for top 10 of 2019 already. And it's weird to say that for a Netflix movie that came out in February, but honestly, this film was incredible. I was in absolute awe at how this movie tackled its subject matter. It tackles death. That's one of the most overdone type of stories in, you know, for, since forever. Stories since they originated have always been about life and death. And this one deals directly with death and friendship, two very basic universal human themes. However, what I love about this movie is its style. A lot of movies like this that deal with a friend that is slowly dying and another friend that has to see him, there's a lot of really depressing scenes. There's a lot of scenes of long sh shots of people sobbing loudly. This movie doesn't have any of that. It's a very raw experience. And most of the movie is just conversation between these two lifelong friends. It's not always about the death. It's not always about the cancer, but you always feel that lurking there. And that is a great way of putting the audience in the character's shoes because that type of atmosphere is exactly how the actual people feel themselves. It's not like every conversation they have is about death or about that. It's mostly that they're still friends. They still talk just the way that they did before, only death is now a factor and it lingers on them and it hurts them, but they still just talk normally. But as the movie goes on, it progressively becomes more and more about death. And it's a very, very sad movie. And the reason why I think at the ending and just everything about the end and how it'll make anybody cry basically why it worked so well is because of ex is because of the style is because of the fact that they didn't feel the need to have long drawn out scenes nobody had to have a monologue about how much they cared about the other person it was an honest friendship so you felt like you were seeing something in real life i also very much wish that this movie came out around oscar season because both leads in this movie did exceptional jobs ray romano should be nominated for best supporting actor on Honestly, if this came out last year and he was in the Best Supporting Actor race, I would say that he should win. Um, I don't remember the other actor's name, but he was incredible as a lead actor. Although, honestly, I think Ray Romano was probably more of a lead and the other guy was more of a supporting actor. But I I just love both of their performances. I thought that they were incredible and they, were, they understood what the director wanted. They understood the fact that he wanted subtle performances that really, really got to you. It's not like the characters in this movie have scenes where they're crying loudly, where they're screaming. They never raise their voice at each other. They're always like this. And at most, towards the end of the movie, the, there's some, there's like one or two scenes of crying. And that's it. It's just such an honest, well done movie. The dialogue, too, is very sharp, very well written, and fits the characters so well. I am amazed at that Paddleton. I wish that I, again, yeah, I, I said it once, I'll say it again. I wish that this was coming out during Oscar season because it deserves a nomination for screenplay for both actors and honestly it probably deserves a nomination for best picture. I will give Paddleton an 8.5 out of 10. All right, that concludes my review for Paddleton. So, what are your thoughts on this film, or what is your favorite movie with Ray Romano? Comment in the comments section below and let me know. Now, before I end this review, I wanted to talk to you about the Netflix original reviews. They aren't going away. I am going to keep on doing them, but 
leading up to Avengers Endgame that is coming out in very, very soon now, I want to start reviewing all of the MCU films, but I don't want to just review one film by one film that would take way too much time, be way too many videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to review each individual trilogy or set of movies. So I will be reviewing Iron Man 3, or Iron Man 1, 2, and 3, and then I'll re be reviewing Captain America 1, 2, and 3, then Thor, and then all of the standalone movies I'll clump into one video, and the Guardians of the Galaxy I'll review together, and the three Avengers movies I'll review together, just so that I'm not talking about the same movies again, that I'm actually talking about them as one consecutive trilogy. So you will see the, my reviews for those. In the meantime, I'll stop doing the Netflix reviews just because I don't have enough time to watch Netflix movies and normal movies and the um, uh, Marvel movies. But I will end up getting back to the Netflix ones afterwards, and I'll try to do some catch-up on some of the Netflix movies I missed. But anyway, that concludes my review. I'm Robert Burke, and this has been The Clever Critics. Goodbye.